Hello everybody, welcome back to the e-learning space of MGM Higher Secondary School, Bukharo. This is the third video for our English Class 8 Grammar Lesson 13. As discussed in the first two videos of Lesson number 13, the chapter is titled Phrases and Clauses. In our last two videos, students, we have seen what are phrases, what are its different types, what are clauses and their different types. In this video, children, we are going to discuss phrases and clauses as given in your grammar right textbook. So the first exercise here is a game. Let us first understand the game. Some sentences are given here. I read a book. The boy enjoys painting. The children went on a picnic. What we have to do is, we have to use certain group of words to these sentences and expand the sentence. Look at the example given here in the picture. The man sat in a car. The man wearing a black scarf, green gloves and brown shoes sat in the old car which was parked in front of my house. So the main sentence has now been expanded. We can similarly expand other sentences also by using phrases and clauses. This is an activity game that we can do in our online classes. Look at this sentence. I have kept the book at the side of the table. At the side of the table is a group of words. It is giving a single idea but not a complete sense. It does not have a subject or a finite verb. Hence, it is a phrase. As discussed in our previous videos, we already know what are phrases. So once again, here is the example of phrase given to you. We have also learned that the phrases based on their functions are divided into three different types. Noun phrases, when they function as a noun in a phrase, in a sentence. Adjective phrase, when they function as an adjective in a sentence. And adverb phrase, when they function or modify a verb, adjective or another adverb in a sentence. The examples are given here in the table. Look at the second exercise in your book. Underline the phrases in these sentences. Then write their types in the given blanks. So we are going to read the sentence. We are going to identify which is the phrase and what kind of phrase is it. First one, I like traveling to new places. Traveling to new places is the phrase. Let's form the question what. I like what. The answer is traveling to new places. If you remember the first video children, we discussed that noun phrases always answer the question what. Hence, traveling to new places is a noun phrase. See the second question. The book has a cover made of leather. Made of leather. Adjective phrase. Why? Because made of leather is describing, serving the function of an adjective. And what is it describing? A noun, the book. Hence, it is an adjective phrase. The rest of the questions, you shall do it on your own. And if you face any trouble, any doubts, any confusion, you are going to discuss it during the online classes. Coming to the clauses section as given in your book, read the sentences. The class is making a lot of noise. This book has beautiful illustrations. If you see, these sentences have subject and finite verb and they also make complete sense on their own. We have learned these groups are called independent clauses. They are also simple sentences. Now read the next group of words. Who lives in Kanpur? When he heard the noise. These group of words, even though they have a subject, they have a finite verb, they are not making a complete sense on their own. They are dependent on something else to complete their meaning. For example, I was talking to my aunt who lives in Kanpur. So this group of words, who lives in Kanpur, needs the first part, I was talking to my aunt, which is itself a simple sentence and independent clause to make its meaning complete. So this kind of clause is also called subordinate clause or dependent clause. A subordinate clause does is a clause that cannot stand on its own and requires an independent clause to complete its meaning. We have already discussed about clauses, its definition, examples and different types in the last two videos. 
Now, once again, we have the types of subordinate clause as discussed earlier. A clause that serves as a noun in a sentence is a noun clause. Look at the examples given. What I want to do is sleep. An adjective clause acts an adjective in a sentence. I spoke to the people who attended the meeting. An adverb clause acts as an adverb in a sentence. We will go wherever our work takes us. Now, once again, in your textbook, as you all know, there are different types of adverb, adverb of place, manner, time. So once again, the adverb clauses can be divided into the Adverb clauses of manner, adverb clauses of place, and adverb clauses of time. So, manner will answer the question how, place will answer the question where, and time will answer the question where. Look at the examples in your textbook and on the screen. She was eating as if she was in a hurry. So, how was she eating? As if she was in a hurry. So, an adverb clause of manner will always answer the question how. Similarly, wherever there are flowers, bees will buzz. So, where will the bees buzz? The answer to where is wherever there are flowers. Hence, this is adverb clause of place. Similarly, look at the next example. After the wheat is harvested, it is threshed. When is the wheat threshed? After the wheat is harvested. So, the adverb of time clause is answering the question when. We also have adverb of clause of reason, adverb clauses of condition and adverb clauses of concession. As the name suggests, adverb clauses of reason will always answer the question why. I didn't finish my homework because I was unwell. So why I didn't finish my work? Because I was unwell. So, adverb clauses of reason are, is answering the question, why? Coming to condition, if you do not hurry up, you will miss the bus. If you do not hurry up, it is giving a condition. So, adverb clauses which uh, have a condition in it are adverb clauses of condition. Similarly, we have concession. Concession means it conveys the unexpected. Although we had offered to help him, he chose to do the work himself. Look at the exercises given to you. Underline the adverb clauses in the sentence and state their types. Now what you have to do is, you have to tell what kind of adverb clause is it. We must leave as soon as the rain stops. So, as soon as the rain stops is the adverb clause. Now, when must we leave? The question when is arising and the answer is as soon as the rain stops. And we have just now learned that whenever an adverb clause answers the question when, then it is an adverb clause of time. See the second question. Although it is small, the house is well designed. Although it is small. So it is showing something unexpected, conveying the unexpected. Hence, it is the adverb clause of concession. Wherever there is a will, there is a way. Wherever there is a will. This is the group of words which has a subject, which has a finite verb. It is again an adverb. Then it is an adverb clause. But what kind of an adverb clause? Where there is a way. Where? The question where is being answered by? Wherever there is a will. Hence, this is an adverb clause of place. Similarly, you're going to do the rest of the exercises on your own. Coming to adjective clauses. As learned in our previous video, children, a clause that functions as an adjective in a sentence is called an adjective clause. But there are also relative clauses. What are relative clauses? When an adjective clause is introduced by a relative pronoun. Look at the slide over here like who which whom who's that then it becomes a relative clause look at the examples here i have a friend who lives in new zealand who lives in new zealand this is an adjective clause because it is telling something about the noun friend and it is the clause is beginning with the relative pronoun who hence this is a 
relative adjective clause or simply relative clause. Similar examples, this is the room which has the best view. I know the boy whose father is an astronaut. So all these adjective clauses are being introduced by a relative pronoun. Hence, they will be called relative clauses. Come to exercise B. Identify the types of clauses in the underlying parts of these sentences. Here is the book that won the Reader's Choice Award. Which kind of an adjective is this? It is an adjective clause. See the next question. The magician will show us how he did the trick. How he did the trick is underlined. So what kind of a clause is it? The magician will show us what. It is answering the question what. Then it is a noun clause. What I want for dessert is an ice cream. What I want for dessert. Again, what, I, what is an ice cream? What I want for dessert. Hence, again, this is a noun clause. The exercise is continued. Let's see the fourth one as well. Just as I lay down, the doorbell rang. So, just as I lay down has been underlined. And what kind of an adjective or what kind of a clause is it? It is an adverb clause. Just as I lay down, it is describing or serving the purpose of an adverb in this sentence. Do the rest of these exercises on your own. Come to exercise C. Complete these sentences with adjective clauses. Remember to have a finite verb in the clause. One has been done for you. I have a cousin who lives in Singapore. So basically, you have to use your own adjective clauses and complete these sentences. Paris is a place which is frequented by my cousin. Frequented means you often go there. Paris is a place which is frequented by my cousin. Tom has a brother who works in the police department. So we are using adjective clauses. I have used relative clauses here. And we have used verb to complete the sentence. Tom has a brother who works in the police department. See the next one. He lives in a house that is almost 60 years old. That is almost 60 years old. So we are using a finite verb in the clause and we are completing the clause. Come to types of relative clauses. Now children, there are different types of relative clauses as well. How can we know which type is what? Let's see. As you know, adjective clauses are also known as relative clauses. Let us find out more about relative clauses that give extra information by defining nouns. Now there are two types of relative clauses. Defining relative clauses and non-defining relative clauses. Defining relative clauses, let us look at their examples and their definition. I found the bottle that you were looking for. She is the girl who was wearing a blue dress yesterday. In the first sentence, the highlighted relative clause qualifies the bottle being referred to. Similarly, in the second sentence, the sentence would have a different meaning without the highlighted relative clause. Therefore, these relative clauses are defining relative clauses. So, I found the bottle that you were looking for. This is the point where the sentence is giving you an important information. Telling something and essential information is being given to us. Hence, this is a defining relative clause. When using a defining relative clause in a sentence, we never use commas. Please, children, keep this in mind. Now, relative clauses, as we learned, are of two types, defining and non-defining. When it is defining, it is providing some essential information and it has no commas. Coming to non-defining relative clauses, as we have already discussed in our last two videos, children, we are discussing it again. Please read this as a recap and you have any doubts, note it down for your online classes. Mr. Joseph, who works with me, got me a gift. So if you look at this part, who works with me, which is a clause, it is beginning with a relative pronoun, 
However, it is not essential to understanding the sentence. Mr. Joseph got me a gift. The main sentence is that. Now, this clause is written between commas, so it is set off by commas and it is an extra information but not important to understand the sentence. Hence, this is a non defining relative clause. So, non defining relative clause is always set up by commas. Also, remember, non defining relative clauses will use all kinds of relative pronouns but not that means they will use all relative pronouns except the word that or except the relative pronoun that. Now here is an exercise for you. Exercise D. Circle the defining relative clauses and underline the non-defining relative clauses in these sentences. My brother who lives in Delhi came to visit me. Who lives in Delhi? There is no comma. And it is giving us an important essential information. Hence, it is a defining relative clause. My brother who lives in Sydney. Now, who lives in Sydney is set up by commas. And if I simply say, my brother came to see me last month, the sentence itself serves the purpose. This extra information, who lives in Sydney, is an added information but not essential to the understanding of this sentence. Hence, it is a non-defining relative clause. I have an old car that won't stop as discussed just now. A non-defining relative clause will never use the relative pronoun that. Hence, over here, this is again a defining relative clause. Now, do the rest on your own. Now, there are some conditionals, if clauses. Let us see what they are. If you don't exercise, you will become unhealthy. If I knew the answer, I would have won the competition. So here is a condition that is set off by if. So a clause beginning with if giving a condition to the sentence. Sentences that talk about possible future situations depending on certain conditions are called conditionals. They are also called if clauses. It always will include if clauses. Now, there can be different types of if clauses or you can say conditionals. There's zero conditional, first conditional, second conditional and third conditional. We shall study about them in our coming slides. So, students, now we know there are four types of conditionals. Zero, first, second and third. Let us see what each one of these are along with their examples. Turn to page 109 to see the examples and understand it better. What is zero conditional? Zero conditional is when we are talking about general truths, habits, things that are sure to happen in a particular condition. Now, how are we going to identify that these general truths are having zero conditional? You, there will be both the if clause and the second clause are in the simple present tense. So basically by looking at the tense of the sentence, we will decide whether the sentence is in the zero conditional or not. And if it is in the zero conditional, then the if clause as well as the second clause both have to be in the simple present tense. Look at the example here. If you touch a switch with wet hands, you may get a shock. What are the two tenses here? Touch and get. And both of these are in simple present tense. And the idea expressed here is a general truth. If you touch a switch with your wet hands, you may get a check, shock. Yes, this is a general truth. See the second one. I am late for work if I miss the bus. Am and miss. These are the two verbs in if clause and the second clause and both are in the simple present tense. If it rains, the grass gets wet. Rains and gets both again here are in the simple present tense. So the if clause and the second clause must be in the simple present tense and we must be talking about some general truth, habit or talk about things that are sure to happen. See what are first conditionals. We use this with sentences denoting things that might happen in the future or things that are likely to come true. 
In the first conditional, the if clause is in the simple present tense and the second clause is in the simple future tense. So now here is the difference. If clause must be in the simple present tense but the second clause must be in the simple future tense and over here we are talking about something that might happen in the future and it might come true. If I meet him today, I will ask him to return your book. So if I meet him today, I will ask him to return your book. Over here, the if clause is in the simple present tense, meet. I will ask is in the simple future tense. Come to the second conditional. When we talk about things that are not likely or impossible to happen, we use the second conditional. In the second conditional, the if clause is in the simple past tense and the second clause uses the would or could and the verb form. See the examples here. If you worked hard, you would secure good marks. The idea here is highly unlikely or quite impossible, but still we got to say this. And how it is a second conditional? Because the if clause is in the simple past, worked. And the second clause is having would along with the verb for. See the second example. If I were in your place, I would ignore the comment. If I were. So once again over here, the if clause is in the simple sense. And the second clause is having a would along with the verb form. See the third conditional. This is used to talk about past situations that didn't happen and their imaginary results. If you hadn't taken proper test, you wouldn't have recovered so fast. So we are talking about a past situation that didn't happen and their imaginary results. You would have lost the case if you had lied to them. So it's a condition that would have happened if something would have taken place, but it did not take place actually. And in the third condition, if you look at the tense, then the if clause is always having the past perfect tense and the second clause is having would along with have and the past participle form. You only have to remember the tense form. If you remember the tense form, then you're always going to remember the different conditionals used. Look. You would have lost the case if you would have if you had lied. Would have lost. This is the second clause, which is having would have and the past participle. But the if clause is having the past perfect tense had lied. Look at the exercise here, children. This is going to help you understand the different conditionals better. If you hadn't insisted that I pursue, I wouldn't have achieved this. Which kind of a conditional this is? Look at it. If you hadn't insisted that I pursue, I wouldn't have achieved this. So this is a kind of a talk that are having an imaginary result. But moreover, look at the tense. If you hadn't. So the if clause is having the past perfect and the second clause I wouldn't have achieved is having would plus have and the past participle form of the verb. Hence, this is a third conditional. So the next question, if the temperature of water reaches 100 degrees, it boils. Don't you think this is a general truth? Yes, we all know this. And the if clause is having reaches, which is simple present and boils. The second clause is also having simple present. So this is a, what kind of a conditional? Yes, it is a zero conditional. See the third one as well. I will speak to her about you if she comes to school today. I will speak. So there is a future tone over here. And the if clause is having, the if clause is having the simple present tense. If she comes. So what do you think this is? Yes, this is the first conditional. The second clause is having the simple future tense and the if clause is having the simple present tense and there is a condition that might happen in the future. So children, if you practice this exercise, I am sure you will be able to understand the conditionals better. If not, 
we are having our online classes to discuss this in further detail. So students, now that we have learnt about phrases and clauses and the different types, let us perfect our knowledge of it. Look at the first exercise. Underline the defining clauses and circle the non-defining clauses in these sentences. The bird sitting on the tree is yellow. First, let us identify which group of words in these sentences is a clause. Sitting on the tree. Sitting on the tree is a clause. And what kind of a clause is it? Defining clause. See the second question. His mother, who is my aunt, was sick. Who is my aunt is a non-defining clause. We have the commas and we have the relative pronoun. See the third one. The pot full of water fell from his hands. Once again, this is a defining clause. Similarly, you are going to complete the rest of the sentences and if you face any confusion, we are going to discuss it during the online classes. Come to exercise B. Complete these sentences using noun clauses. First of all, remember what is a noun clause? A noun clause serves the function of a noun in a sentence. It also answers the question, what? So, first one. I think that you are lying. He told me how he rescued the little girl from the crocodile. Please show me what you have done until now. Similarly, you have to make sure that you use noun clauses to complete these rest of the sentences. Come to question number C. Complete these sentences using adverb clauses. Look at the first question. If Dash, you will be ill. If you play outside in the sun for too long, comma, you will be ill. Take a lamp because it will be dark outside. So we are using adverb clauses to complete these given sentences. Did they finish? In the correct manner, question mark, because it is a question. Also remember students, these answers may vary from person to person because it depends on your imagination and vocabulary what kind of clauses you choose to fill up these blank and make proper sentences. So children, let us now continue. Come to exercise D. Fill in the blanks with adjective clauses. My sister likes the skirt. What is an adjective clause? It can be a relative clause beginning with a pronoun, relative pronoun and functions as an adjective in the sentence. My sister likes the skirt which has blue frills. Similarly, see the second one. My father has an uncle who lives in New York. I like the food which is served in this hotel. Come to exercise E. Complete these sentences using defining relative clauses. So relative clauses are actually adjective clauses. They begin with relative pronoun. What is defining relative clauses? They define something and they provide essential extra information. See the first one. An optician is one who makes glasses that correct eye defects. The school that I went to has a long history of academic and sporting excellence. The monument which was built in the memory of Mumtaz Mahal is located in Agra. Coming to exercise F, rewrite these sentences using non-defining relative clauses in your notebook. Now the, these exercises where you have to fill blank and use clauses of your own can vary from person to person. The answers may vary because each everybody has their own vocabulary and imagination. So you need not worry as long as your clauses fit to the definition of the clause you are using. Coming to the size F. Okay, my sister will visit me next month. So what is 
non-defining relative clause, it should begin with relative pronoun except that and it should have some extra information but which is non-essential. So my sister who recently got married will visit me next month. But this is not how we are going to write. We also have to use commas. Remember, non-defining relative clauses always are set off by commas. So my sister, comma, who recently got married, comma, will visit me next month. See the next one. This book is interesting. This book, comma, whose author was a well-known philanthropist, comma, is interesting. The film won an award. So we can also write this as the film, comma, which is a commentary on the political system of our country, comma, won an award. So the rest of the sentences will be done in the same way. Coming to the size G, in each of the given sentences, the other clause is not in accordance with the if clause. Underline the incorrect clause and rewrite each sentence with the correct clause. So we have learned about conditionals. We have learned about if clauses. Now here is a chance to practice our knowledge of it. We would reach the finals if we win this match. So how are we going to place it? We will reach the finals if we win this match. That is the correct way of writing the statement. See the second one as well. If I go out today, I would have bought pens for Ruham. If I go out today, comma, I will bring pens for Ruhan. See the third one. I will bake cakes if I knew how to prepare the batter. I would bake cakes if I knew how to prepare the batter. I would. So do the two others on your own. Coming to the comprehension, children. Comprehension you will do in your book itself. You just have to read this. You have practiced it enough in all your periodics and your half yearlies as well. So here is an article. Read it carefully and then answer the questions that follow. Who is an archaeologist? What evidence is there to show that it is the oldest shoe? To whom did the oldest known leather shoe belong? Describe that shoe and write a summary of this article and give it a suitable title. Dear students, phrases and clauses are always a part of a sentence. We use phrases and clauses to expand sentences. You have already learned these in these three videos on the lesson. Now it is your turn to do the assignments to enhance your knowledge of the same. First of all, you're going to complete all the textual exercises in the grammar book as much as possible. That is, as many blanks are there, those blanks should be complete in your books. You face any problem, feel free to reach out the teacher during the online classes. Then, the mention exercises here have to be done in the English notebook and practice the comprehension that is given at the end of the lesson in the book itself or in your vocabulary copies. That's all for today, children. Thank you and take care.